All right, next up we have Tabshora. Hello, I'm Andrea. Thank you for having me here. Did you know that a box can help children get good education? Rami is four years old, and in his region, the public school does not have a kindergarten, because in Lebanon, compulsory education starts at six. Salma is three and lives in a refugee camp. And like thousands of refugees, she cannot access school. Their only option to get an education are local community-based centers. But these centers do not have the resources to offer proper education. That's where we come in. We provided those centers with digital content. We believe in local content for local context. Our solution combines adapted content online and offline deployment, and capacity building workshops for teachers and IT. Our, digital, our content is available online for free. Because of the unreliability of electricity and the lack of internet in remote areas, we developed Topshura in a Box, which allows the offline deployment of our digital content. This Raspberry Pi powered server runs on a power bank and allows up to 30 students to use our content simultaneously. We are here today to seek partnerships to scale and impact more learners and funding to create new content to teach kids competencies that will help them in their future learning. The competencies of analysis, creativity and autonomy. We wish to develop augmented programs based on storytelling and decision making to create local superheroes with which children can relate. This brings us to our first superhero, Abdemon. The alphabet was lost in the city of Byblos. The Phoenicians needed help. Abdemon is going to save the alphabet. Children become Abdemon, complete activities, and save the letters. Lal is the leading content, educational content, in Lebanon and is working with more than 40 educational centers and schools. And this number is expected to double in the upcoming year. We believe that our team, composed of pedagogical experts, content developers, and tech professionals, is perfectly suited to achieve this goal. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, the refugee um, um, situation um, is a very complex thing, and and and, and providing education uh, to refugees has been um, a struggle to the education sector, to the uh, entire community. A lot of efforts from the United Nations, from the European Union, um, from from different agencies are trying to get a solution. But you have the teachers' problem, you have the students, you have Syrian refugee children, for instance, who's going to Jordan. They have a different curriculum than the uh, the ones they, they go to Lebanon. In Lebanon, you have three languages or three curriculums in Lebanon, and then you have the ones which goes to Turkey. So um, I just want to know <clears throat> if your content is in line or can it be in line with, uh, with your, uh, you're from Lebanon, right? Yeah. So is it in line with the Lebanese curriculum? And can this be tweaked uh, 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 if you go global to different curriculums in different languages? Thank you. Um, our content is aligned with the Lebanese curriculum. We have a curriculum uh, designer that makes sure that our content is of good quality and perfectly aligned with the curriculum. And we believe in, like we said, local content for local context. So if we ever are going to take it global, we're going to uh, try to work with the people on the ground. So if we're ever going to work with people in Jordan, for example, we're going to, to have a co-creation so that's why we have workshops and trainings for teachers, because we can even teach them how to co-create content and be able to adapt content for the local context. Could you 
talk. <clears throat> so it's great that you have um, a partnership with the Ministry of Education in Lebanon. Could you tell us a little bit more about other partnerships that you're thinking about, um, particularly for the refugee context that could help you to really scale in these contexts? Yeah. Um, so currently we are working, uh, we have projects with Malala Fund, and um, uh, Malala Fund has a lot of different schools in, in vulnerable areas in Lebanon and includes refugees. Um, we are going to sign a project, hopefully, with GIZ. And we're working with a lot of local NGOs and NGOs that are working in parallel with Syria and Lebanon. So this will help us scale up and impact more learners and impact more refugees. Hi. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about parents and how responsive they are and how committed they are to this? Parents? Yeah, their engagement uh, in this process. Sorry? Parents' engagement in this process. Okay, uh, mainly we are working now with the with community-based centers and schools. So our direct contact are with, with teachers, and um, on the ground, what we saw, we we just offer on um, we're like behind uh, backstage, if you if you if I may say, and um, and the like the the parents try to send as much as pos possible their students uh, their children, sorry to the community-based centers. And the community-based centers are the ones dealing with the parents. So we're more ma mainly backstage creating the, the content. Let me rephrase. Are yeah. you seeing impact of your initiative on increasing the number uh, of kids and, the, and their participation levels as okay. a result of your work? Yeah, okay. Um, we, have, we had a study based, um, we had a study in the community-based centers and we, mainly researched the impact that our, our curriculum had on the students. And we, dis we, we saw that the, the, the children knew, learned twice as much as children that didn't use our program. So there was an independent study that, uh, from our Oxford fellow that uh, was researched on the, the impact that, of this platform. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, 